So, you want to be a novelist. Just starting out, a little nervous about maybe trying to write that first novel. Maybe this is your second attempt and you're worried about finishing. Here's one thing that helped me finish my novels. Come up with a killer first sentence, a first sentence that really just grabs you and pulls you in. Being evocative, hinting at a secret and promising a story, moving forward and backwards at time, moving forwards and backwards in time simultaneously, and most important, and saving the most important word uh, for the last possible word. It was a new elevator, freshly pressed to the rails, and it's not built to fall this fast. Wow, evocative, it's got a lot of tension, uh, it hints at a secret, who's on this elevator, why is the elevator falling, uh, it moves forwards and backwards at the same time. We're about to find out why someone's falling off, uh, why, why, why the elevator's falling, but someone must have gotten on the elevator. Was it sabotage? Did someone fix it? And then the most important word in this sentence is the last word. It's not built to fall this fast. Um, and so I think that's just uh, that's uh, just a gem. So now let's look at something that's not quite as, as powerful. You know, the um, the first line of Neuromancer, the sky above the port was the color of a television tuned to a dead channel. So I would say this one, you know, kind of wins the prize for evocative. It, it's not so big on hinting at the story or, or telling a secret. It, it, you know, you don't have to fire on all four of these cylinders. I just made up these four qualities anyway. Um, it does, uh, it doesn't really move forward and backwards at the same time. It's more about the evocation, but it does save the most, one of the most important words for, you know, the, the last or the next to last. In this case, dead is that powerful, you know, foreboding sense. And if you ever read Neuromancer, you know, the world, uh, that it takes place in is, is a foreboding one of technology and, and, you know, very, very grim. Uh, now let's go back to another, you know, masterful sentence they shoot the white girl first. So evocative violence, conflict right up front, again, hinting at a secret, promising a story. Who are these people? And at the same time, moving forward and backwards in time, you know, they, who are they? How did this uh, conflict begin to uh, uh, form itself? And then it really ends with this powerful word first. They shoot the white girl first. Oh, crap, who are they gonna shoot next? Uh, so, uh, you know, I think that one, uh, is the, is the quadfecta, uh, it has all four points. It's quadfecta a word, why not? Um, all right, let's take a look at the last one. Uh, you know, so here's one from, uh, nonfiction. Six years after the fact, Dr. Paul, uh, Edward Farmer reminded me, we met because of a beheading of all things. So here's an excellent, it, it's evocative. We see the beheading. Uh, you know, there's a secret. Why are these two? Why do you, why does this guy know this doctor that's involved in a heading and a beheading? Uh, and it does move forward and backwards in time at the same time, thinking back to when they met at that beheading, looking forward to whatever uh, is going to develop in the relationship in the future. And then, um, you know, the most important word in that sense, of course, is beheading. It's towards the end. Uh, they save the best for the last. Okay. So I think, uh, that made my point. Uh, I hope I, it's it's just one way of looking at great sentences. Maybe different first sentences work for you. But uh, one exercise, if you wanted to start out uh, your book with a sucker punch, is to sit down and see if you can come up with a first sentence. It takes a long time, but all three of the novels uh, I've gotten to publication. You know, I couldn't really get going on them until I got that first sentence just right. And uh, that, that's telling me that I'm way over time. So um, thank you very much. I, I hope to see you in class.